Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. How's it going? Are you enjoying DevConf? Yeah. Great. So today, I'm going to talk about how we are using Packet, TMT, and Copper in uh, testing, automating, uh, automating the build process of container tools and its packages, like Podman, Scopio, and others. So. It is actually sh uh, should be presented by uh, my colleague, and uh, unfortunately he couldn't make it. So, but he put this uh, great uh, presentation together. So thanks to him. And uh, starting with that, uh, how many of you are using Packet? Uh, I was expecting less, so that even if I say something wrong, no one is going to care. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, a brief history of how it all started. So in Container Tools team, especially with the Podman, we were using Cirrus. Uh, it's a third-party CI system. It is great at some of the things, but it lacks a lot of uh, features that we want, especially with the automation um, in the downstream building and testing. Uh, and then, oh, we... Uh, that's a brief history of it, and then uh, we are going to talk about like how Cirrus is different from Packet, and what actually is Packet, and how we are using TMT, and the challenges that we are facing, and the future. So the target audience for this one is who are all upstream maintainers um, of like Fedora and uh, uh, CentOS stream package maintenance uh, that you know they have a upstream package that they do downstream maintenance of that package, as well as uh, you know, testing the latest bits that even not released sometimes. And also uh, the downstream maintainers, like who wants to automate their build uh, process, it's really helpful. And uh, also the having a single source of truth, everything in one place in upstream for your tests, as well as spec files and other, other things that you need for packaging, it's for them. And a little disclaimer, so we are just the users of Packet and TMT. So if you have any questions with Packet and TMT, there is Miro, raise your hand. You can go to him. And I'm not seeing uh, Francis, so yeah. And uh, to get a brief intro of like what Packet is and uh, t uh, Packet and TMT and testing forms is, uh, I, I strongly suggest uh, going to the uh, or listening to this uh, amazing vlog uh, talk put together by Simon and Laura uh, for the last vlog. So it's available in the slides. And the history part, yes, as I was saying with the Cirrus build issues. Cirrus has a lot of issues, uh, especially it doesn't understand uh, the distros. And also when we try to build in Cirrus, it uses go build flags which is okay, but we really want to uh, you know, build how, or we want to know how it builds in the distros, which it cannot do. And then there is Koji build issues. It's more on the lines of like architecture availability. So we, when we make a release, until we make a release and we try to build it in the Koji, we don't know if it's gonna fail in multi-arch platforms. Um, Cirrus uh, at the time only supported x86-64. And then rel gating issues. So we would like to know how our changes impacting on the rel side. As many of you know, it will take like three to six months or even more time to actually see your uh, software in rel. It can be too late by then. So we want to see how our changes are impacting rel as well. And uh, Cirrus uh, couldn't provide, a, or it does, but it's very hard to implement. It's, uh, uh, reverse dependency, uh, reverse dependency, dependency testing. So uh, when we think of container tools, a lot of people think of just Podman, but there are so many other uh, packages that make up Podman, and we have to do vendor dancing for uh, to get a release out. And if something is changed in one of these leaf nodes, we don't know how it's going to impact the higher level packages like Podman. So we really want to see those changes and how it's getting impacted, these higher leaf nodes. And also there are um, other packages that depend on Podman, like um, 
uh, cockpit, where is Martin. So Martin is also using uh, Packet and TMT to see how Podman changes are impacting cockpit. And the automation part, it's, as I was saying, it's uh, very, we want to uh, have an automated way of doing all this, especially the build process, so that there will be minimal uh, manual intervention into the build process. So, a brief differences between Cirrus and Packet. Um, there is, in Cirrus, it's just a third party thing and it doesn't understand what Fedora and CentOS stream is. So it's, uh, it's very hard as, uh, for us to maintain the release mapping. It's, uh, we have to change every time they, when there are, whenever there is a release goes evil or a new release gets added. It's hard, I mean, it's pain. <laughs> so uh, Packet will take care of all of that and it's, it's Packet's headache, not yours they will maintain all the release mappings for you. <laughs> and um, same with CentOS Stream as well. And uh, there is no automation for downstream building uh, in Cirrus, whereas Packet can help you like, automate 99% of the things once you create a release in upstream to being made it available in Fedora or CentOS Stream with a 1%, which I can explain later. <laughs> um, then there is no reverse dependency testing and uh, Cirrus versus packet does provide it through TMT. And cost, it's, you have to pay to use Cirrus. It's free uh, to use a packet, free, free, free. And also uh, the other advantages of like having single source of truth and uh, rel testing. So I sort of explained this one, but I just want to repeat those benefits. Everything maintained upstream in one place, single source of truth for tests and spec files, and also easy management of test matrices, like no need of, uh, uh, it knows what are the distros, and you don't have to worry about what distros and what arch to you know, build it against. And also, uh, advanced warning of possible issues, as in like if, how it's gonna impact in RHEL, how it's gonna impact in CentOS stream, of every, PR that you're going to make to your uh, upstream repo. And uh, uh, don't need to worry about uh, the release mapping. Packet will take care of that and no extra cost, reverse dependency testing and rel testing. So let's look at how it, how it happens. Uh, everything starts with the packet uh, configuration file and uh, you have to talk to the packet guys to get some permissions to add a packet to your repo. And once you get the permission, you just add uh, uh, an AML file called .packet.aml. And it's where you list all the uh, jobs that you want to run on, on the changes. The basic config kind of looks like this, where you specify like uh, what is the package name. And especially the downstream package name, as in like what you want to call it in uh, Fedora or CentOS stream. And uh, there is the upstream tag template. It will help Packet identify what is the versioning scheme that you are following so that it will uh, do the bumps uh, of the next releases easily. And uh, then there are the package section. Package section will identify like, it is the one that creates the identifiers for what you are gonna use it in the next sections for different distros. And uh, sync to files, let's get back to that later. <laughs> And uh, then you want to s have a copper build happen on every upstream PR. So the way that you can uh, do that is uh, specifying the job, that is, which is copper build, and what is the trigger that's gonna trigger this one, which is on every pull request, and what are the packages you want to run this uh, uh, packet uh, job on. And there are multiple other things that you can specify. And uh, targets is the one of the things that is important because as I was saying initially, you don't have to worry about uh, the uh, release mapping. It can be all done over here. Uh, you can call Fedora all, which it, it's gonna run it against all the Fedora active releases. Um, this copper build is an epithermal build. So it means that you don't have to create a copper repo for it. It's Packet is gonna take care of that and uh, you just see whether it's buildable or not and, and whether it's passing the testing tests or not. But what if, if you want to have a, 
a bill that's going to stay there in the copper for you know uh, for the latest and greatest folks who wants to use Podman right when there is a commit on upstream. So that's when you use uh, uh, this another trigger called commit on, and you say which branch you want to uh, track this on. And whenever it packet sees this commit on that particular branch, it will generate a pack, uh, copper build and it's going to stay there forever. And it's, it's a copper build uh, based upon your namespace and stuff. So it's, uh, you don't have to specify the uh, targets, whatever the copper repo has those targets as. Um, it's going to build it against them. And then the, you want your releases to be automatically populated into distgit. And this is the job that you, uh, you can use, like propose downstream. So when it has to trigger it on every upstream release, and you want it to uh, create a pull request on all, the, on all the branches that you care about. Currently, it's all Fedora uh, branches or CTNS and it will create the pull request for you. And this is the part where I said it can automate everything except that 1%, and this is it. It will create the pull request, but someone manually has to go and review the pull request and approve it and merge it. So it's, it's the design choice that Packet has gone with, and uh, that's the 1% of the job that you have to do as a packager. And then once it is merged, in distgit, you want uh, to have an actual build happen in Koji and create an update automatically. So these, these are the jobs that will help you uh, with that thing. So it, whenever it, uh, there is a pull request, someone merges in distgit, it will automatically uh, uh, does a Koji build for you. And then, then it will uh, create the body updates. So that's all the packaging side of things about getting your upstream PR or upstream release through distgit and through the build system and through updates. But what about tests? So Packet is also helpful with the running the test cases for you. And it's, it's very simple. Like you want to test it on every pull request, right? So that's the job and you create the trigger, trigger for the job. And uh, then you want to specify what are all the targets that you want to run these test cases against and it will run on every PR. And how do you define these test cases? And uh, it's, TMT is, uh, um, is divided these things into two parts, like L1 metadata and L2 metadata. L1 metadata specifies what to run, and L2 metadata specifies when and how to run. So basically, in L1 metadata, you'll add your test cases, and you add provide tags for it. Some of the test cases that you want to run on upstream PRs, and some of the test cases you want to run on downstream pull requests. So you can differentiate that pro by providing the tags. And this is the L2 metadata, uh, an example of it. And uh, basically, here you specify what and how to, uh, sorry, how and when to run. And, uh, and the way that it is identified is. For example, if you take the config on the right top side, it's, um, we are saying that whenever the initiator is a packet, that means it is a bot that is doing it, not uh, a human. So we want to run the upstream tests for that. And uh, as I said, packet is autom uh, automating the everything for us. And whenever it sees a packet PR created in the downstream, in the disk gate, we want to run the downstream disk, uh, tests for that. And um, this is a just example of how you can uh, view the upstream and downstream tests and what are their results and everything. And coming back to the syncing of files that we kind of discussed initially. So once you have your uh, distgit uh, PR, uh, sorry, once you have the release done in the upstream, you want to bring in all the files that matters to you into your distgit, including um, Tarballs or uh, you know, getting uh, sorry, including tests or uh, uh, any configs that you want to maintain. So you can specify that in uh, files to sync, and it will uh, when pa packet creates the PR against uh, diskit, it will bring in all those files. And you don't have to specify the spec file here because packet uh, by default does that for you. 
And uh, this is the distributing um, uh, test that you uh, want to include. It's basically, um, in, if you have seen Fedora Bodhi updates, you can run test cases in that. So you specify what are the test cases and everything in this, uh, in this getting file. So, a simple demo, but I don't think uh, we have enough time to go over the entire demo, so I'll just show you a simple example. Um, so, I'm creating just a branch and let's say, just to, you know, um, make, the, uh, make Dan mad. <laughs> um, and it can run on draft PRs as well. Uh, so let me push it to the fork. Oh. Uh, oh. oh, sorry. Thank you. Create pull requests, and within a second, see, uh, as you can see, it started running all the uh, tests. And while we wait for it to complete it, uh, it's running. We can take a look at the previous example, and uh, so this is basically running. Uh, build test as well as you, the important stuff is like how we are using test forms. So let's take a look at this. And dashboard. And it's up. Oh, hold on. That's better. Yep. So this is an upstream PR. So that's why it is running just the upstream stuff. And once we merge the pull request, it will create the uh, uh, pull request in distgit, but downstream. And this is how it's gonna look like. And it is, uh, oh, is that one? No. And as you can see, oh, uh, created by packet and uh, merged by Lokesh. Uh, as I said, someone has to manually uh, merge it. And the downstream stuff, you can go to this one. And in the Zool, you can see the downstream part, only running the downstream test here. And if once it is merged and built, it will automatically create the body update for you. And you can take a look at that, and it's going to run the distro uh, level uh, CI. And the important stuff is um, CI Koji build tier zero functional. And you can see the downstream testing happening here. So that's pretty much it. If anyone wants to automate their packaging process, and also if you uh, want to have CI testing on like everything on upstream and have one place for everything so that you don't have to maintain different spec files. It's packet is a great tool. So yeah, any questions? Yes. So you're showing off this stuff with x86.64. Yes. What about the other architecture? You can do that. We just don't have it enabled. That's it. Well, that sounds like I can't do it. You can. Oh, Miro? Yes. Oh, yeah, but. Yeah. 
We don't, the packet doesn't support uh, power and uh, S3 and index, but ARM, you can do that. Why not? Sorry? Uh, Miro, maybe, <laughs> why not? <laughs> Yeah, maybe Meta has some. If Meta has some, we're more than happy to take it. <laughs> no, copper is different. Packet cannot. Yes, yes, for the TMT part. Martin, you had a question? I don't know personally, but I don't uh, hear anything from Locus that it, it was a problem. So maybe, is, is it constant or just one time you tried it and it didn't work? No, no, it's, it doesn't work like by design. Yeah. Oh. Because, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, it, as far as I know, as per Locus, it worked, but I don't know the details. I'm expecting some question from Dan. Yeah. Uh, we haven't tried SourceGate. And uh, as far as I know, it it's not supported in SourceGate, right? We, we don't use source gate. Everything is in the dish gate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, currently, we only support container SE Linux that's going to uh, test the uh, reverse dependency testing for Podman. But uh, we are planning on expanding it to other container tool packages. Anything? Wow, such a quiet audience. Love it. <laughs> Anything else? Well, if not, uh, thank you everyone for coming and I would like to thank Lokesh for putting this together. <laughs> <laughs>